Hello YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of the Dexter Season 7 premiere and it was awesome. It was the best episode since the Season 4 finale. Um, I said that about an episode last season, uh, which seems weird in hindsight to say that, but um, it really was. It was, you know, it was suspenseful and just, you know, kind of like tightly written, even though there was a lot going on. It felt fresh and exciting and just exactly it felt like exactly what this show needs and i'm looking forward to them keeping it up okay basically i'm going to tackle this review by different like sections of the the episode um i'm not going to just i'll go over the deb and dexter stuff at the end of the episode but um yeah i guess i'll just start with the mob the ukrainian mob which is the new problem this season and I don't mind it because a mob means, you know, a whole group of people that have to be taken out. You know, not just by Dexter, but also by Miami Metro, which I think will give, you know, a lot of our characters something to do all season. I know a mob isn't the most, you know, isn't like the, the newest idea for something like this to deal with, for any, you know, procedural show to deal with or anything like that. Um, you know, like a CSI or something like that, but Dexter's different. And also the thing is, there's so many other interesting things going on this season that reinventing the wheel with another new, you know, different type of villain doesn't really seem that necessary. As long as this mob thing is good, uh, I'll be happy with it. What sucked is we lost uh, Mike Anderson, who the character never really got off the ground. And I think it was a way for the writers to kind of just, you know... Not, not tie up a loose end, but just kind of get rid of the stuff that wasn't working. Which is what they have to do. They have to get rid of the stuff that isn't working and just go with what is working. Because then, then we'll have a good show. Unlike the last couple of seasons, or specifically last season, where things were just, you know, shit. Um, yeah, it sucks that the character didn't go anywhere, but... I mean, I'd rather him be gone if they can't find anywhere for him to go. All right, the one thing that was a little disappointing was the introduction of Ray Stevenson as our new big bad. I'm looking forward to seeing pretty much everything that he does because I loved him on Rome. Uh, he played Titus Pullo on Rome, and he's awesome. But we didn't really get to see, you know, much of an introduction. Usually they're better at introductions anyway. I know he, his character is going to be more important as the season goes along. Uh, especially because Dexter's got too many things to deal with right now with Deb and Lewis and other stuff. So, but it was weird. It was like 15 seconds and all he really did was like, you know, pick up the phone and say like, you know, okay, what's going on? Okay, this is going on. All right, well, I'll see you when, you know, when you land. I'll see the guy when he lands. Like, that was it. It was kind of a shitty introduction. But um, I'll hold off on that. I hope, uh, I hope he can deliver. And like I said, he's a big guy. So hopefully the fact that he is a big guy will make him more difficult for Dexter to take out. But we'll see how that goes. Okay, Lewis. Lewis is one of the decent things about last season that I was kind of looking forward to seeing what they would do. He was a good holdover from last season. Uh, and he pissed me off immensely in this episode. Made me really want Dexter to get him, which is a good thing. Because um, I didn't quite know how to feel about him at the end of last season. I mean, I knew like he was going to be a problem. But I like how he's just like a annoying. Like We already just want him out of it. and um, Or at least I did anyway. Good fake out with the opening where it was Lewis that canceled all of Dexter's cards and not Deb. That was uh, that was well done, and um, I just like how Dexter is like already pissed off at him, and Lewis honestly he feels like basically like an appetizer already. I said this in like the, the preview video I did for the season, but I really I don't see Lewis lasting until I mean I think maybe he'll make it to the halfway mark of this season. I just hope that. Whatever he does has, you know, repercussions for the rest of the season. Or the series, I guess, since we only have, you know, two seasons left to go. So as long as that happens... Also, by the way, great job, Jamie, on um, just telling him he's getting weirder and weirder and then climbing right back into his bed. All right, Quinn and Batista. Now, these are two characters that... I heard people complain, like, oh, you know, they made up, so, you know, they're just going to be, what, buddy-buddy this season? Like, what is that? You know... I would rather Quinn and Batista do nothing this season except investigate the crime, the, the, like all this shit with the mob, than have it be about Quinn and his drinking, or Batista and his divorce, and whatever bullshit. If the only thing the two of them are going to do this season is just be just head-on investigating all the mob shit, 
I mean, if they're going to do other shit, fine, but just, we don't need to get in their heads this season. Just have them be there, have them serve their purpose as side characters, and that's it. If that's what they're going to do, great. Um, and if you want to build up the, the relationship between the two characters and then kill one of them off at the end of the season, um, hopefully Quinn. Sorry, um, sorry Kelly, I know you like Quinn, but I don't know. A manorexic look, I don't really get it. But anyway, I just, yeah, he, if like Quinn or Batista are going to go by the end of the season, at least build up the character's relationship. So that'll even make it, you know, uh, make it hurt a little bit. So, yeah. I liked it. All right, LaGuardia should not have seen that slide. But um, the truth is, I'm just, like, thrilled that she has something to do. Because I can't stand her, but she has something to do. She's not just going to be a bitch in the background that shows up and acts like a bitch. Now she can show up, act like a bitch, and at least she's trying to investigate the Bay Harbor Butcher thing. So she has a purpose. And a purpose that is going to have, that is going to mean something by the end of the season. And that's a good thing. That's one of the things we want in this show, for something to actually lead to something. And that's what's been missing, and that is what looks like will not be missing this season. So thank God. All right, the best thing about this series are the scenes between Deborah and Dexter. And this episode was full of them, and they were all great. I love the use of the flashbacks. I hope we get a lot of that over the course of the season. Um, kind of, uh, you know to just kind of go with, like, the present-day stuff. But, yeah, it was just, it was great to see, it was great to see how Deb was able to figure out right away what was going on. She, you know, she just, like, she's a detective, and she used her detective skills and figured it out right away. Even, like, you know, she saw the plastic right away. It says, no, something's not right. Jennifer Carpenter was awesome the entire episode, and I'm really looking forward to watching her just, like, freak out all season um, with what's going on with Dexter. The whole idea of her knowing just gives this show so much more life than it's had in the past couple of seasons. We're waiting for her to catch him forever. She finally has, and this, and it didn't disappoint so far. And as far as the incest angle that they were, you know, playing up, even though it's not really incest, like... I love that Dexter kind of, it wasn't dropped. You know, Dexter asked her, like, what were you doing at the church at all? And it was actually the only time in the episode he was able to really kind of, like, silence her. Um, but I kind of, we kind of need that thing to not be dropped. It's going to have to stick around. It's too much of a, you know, it's too much of something for them to just, like, let it go completely. Um, and honestly, I'm going to predict something here. I think that La Guerta is going to you know, track, you know, the Bay Harbor Butcher stuff throughout the whole season, and she is going to figure it out, and she's going to uh, figure out that it's Dexter. Because otherwise there's no real point in her in her doing this. So she's going to figure it out, and by the end of the season, I think she's going to confront Dexter. And I heard people saying, like, oh, the Guerta's going to end up on Dexter's table. Not going to happen, I think, because uh, that's against the code. I think La Guerta's going to find out. I think Deb's going to be the one to take out La Guerta by the end of the season, because she's going to have to choose between Dexter and, you know, yeah. And it would make the whole Deborah LaGuerta thing throughout all the seasons, you know, really have a crazy kind of kind of confrontation and kind of finish. But uh, that remains to be seen. We'll see how that goes, but yeah. The thing about Dexter the past couple of seasons of this show, even going back to season three, we've seen the family man Dexter, the grieving husband Dexter, and, like, daddy Dexter. And now it's back to, like, the roots a little bit here where it's just angry Dexter, the guy that needs to go out and kill someone. And um, that's my favorite version of the character, and I can't wait to just, you know, watch it week in and week out and pretty much just see how he is going to lose a little bit of control and need to take out guys one by one. And we got our kill of the week, uh, which is at an airport, which is fitting because you would think Dexter would try to get away the second somebody found out about this. He had his getaway bag. So it was fitting that the kill was at an airport pretty you know i don't know how you you, you can do that in an airport bath, bathroom you know there's cameras at an airport so it's kind of ridiculous um to be able to kill anyone in an airport but what can you do yeah so dexter has multiple problems this season he's got to deal with everything with deb he's got laguerta on his ass he's got lewis 
the mob, and from the preview, we know the new blonde chick, the girl from uh, the show Chuck. We don't know what's going on with, with her. So that's five problems that they have to spread out over the course of the season. But there are five things I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how they play out. And that's, that's great. That's exactly what we want. We want multiple storylines that, you know, are interesting. And I could just hope that they, they all lead to something and that, you know, as good as this first episode was, I'm expecting a little bit of a step back to kind of set up things as the season goes. But if they can, you know, keep up the momentum that this episode, um, you know, that started from this episode... We're going to have a great season and, you know, hopefully a great last two. And so I could not be more excited as a, a fan of this show who, you know, was hoping they would pull their heads out of their asses uh, from the last season. And it looks like for now, at least for one episode, they have. So, um, yeah. All right. Let me know what you thought, guys. I'll talk to you next week.